when we knew that you were coming on the show, Rick, we put out, uh, as always, a call to our audience for some for some questions to uh, to put to you. And I think we have a few. Diego, uh, do you want to start off? Yeah, yeah I want to start because, you know, David Ascanio, that is our, our mutual friend from Venezuela, he, he said he didn't have a question per se, because he said, like, watching a border show with Rick Rom was going to be like watching all the Star Wars movies in, 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 a, in the same day. So, so related to that superlative, what's, what's, what's your most superlative lacking bird? Uh, well, you know, uh, asking about what your favorite bird is, is kind of like asking a parent who your favorite child is. You know, you just, you just, you just can't go there. Right? I'll probably go on the, on the most bizarre of, of the lacking craziness you've seen, you know? <laughs> Well, one, one, one bird, uh, you know, I'd have to say in, in the pantheon up there is, is, would be, of course, the clubbing mannequin, which we've talked about before. But another, another bird that's super special uh, is the velvet acidi, uh, oh, Philippita yeah. castini, from, from yeah. Madagascar, um, which, um, you know, I studied back in the 90s. And, um, you know, I, when I learned that, the, uh, that this was a, 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 a tropical rainforest bird, with sexual dimorphism, delayed plumage maturation, that is, it took years for the males uh, to develop uh, their, their, their plumage. Uh, they were frugivorous. Uh, it, that just said to me, mannequin, 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 mannequin. But literally <laughs> nothing was known about their, their, their breeding at that time. So I went to Madagascar to, to, to study it and uh, discovered that it is a lecking bird. So this is another origin of mannequin-like uh, lacking that evolved in the in the old world sub ossines the broadbills uh, and, uh, uh, and and so you know that uh, and then and then actually studying the bird the wattle uh, on this thing it's just this gorgeous green uh, uh, skin glowing green and blue on the, the, the wattle over the eyes uh, on the velvet acidi and um, and, and studying that got me all into this big research program on structural color and the physics of optical colors, you know, non-pigmentary colors. And so, you know, that had a, a, an incredible impact on, on my career. And, um, and so that's, a, that's, a, that's up there. That's up there. That's close to the... We've actually been showing my, my images of this bird from Madagascar because when I saw that bird in Madagascar, I was always remembering the painting on your paper. Like on that bird, absolutely, absolutely <laughs> mind blowing, you know, fruit eating, lacking vein in the other side of the world. A marvelous, a marvelous plate by Tracy Peterson, a fantastic uh, yeah. bird artist out of the Philadelphia area. Very cool. I'm looking at a picture of it now, and it it, it does look a lot, it does look like a mannequin. I'm looking at a picture of it now. The velvet acetate it looks yeah. If I didn't know better, I'd have said it was a weird type of mannequin. Very cool. Um, I have a question from uh, Willem Pierre Velinga. And he asks uh, if perhaps you can share a story or an insight on vocal adornments in birds. Ornaments are, 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 are evolved features of the phenotype or the organism that function through the perception, cognitive evaluation, and choices of other individuals, right? So that's how you get something that functions not just in the physical world, the, the, uh, but in the cognitive world, the brain, if you will, of other individuals. And... Um, I think you know one of the more extraordinary uh, features of that uh, uh, is um, a, a recent paper we have out, right, where we were interested in in um, asking, do bird songs have music, musical structure, temporal structure, aesthetic structure over time? That is, is it some? Is there something like, uh, well, in composition, people talk about sort of introduction variations on a theme, and then resolution of expectations as kind of temporal sequence of what a, a musical piece has to do, right? Um, and we asked, do bird songs do that? So what we did was we took 30 very complicated bird songs uh, that had discrete notes, and we rearranged them. And we played them to volunteers on the web, on the internet, that had no experience in, 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 in judging bird songs. And we asked them, which is more musical? Uh, the original bird song, or the same exact information uh, scrambled in a different order. And we found that a uh, tremendously, you know, a really significant result, uh, the, by a really significant margin, people found the original bird song to be more uh, musical. 
right? And, and so what we think that means is that we, we don't care what people think about bird songs, really. <laughs> but we use that to, think, to, to, to assess whether or not birds themselves uh, in their uh, evaluations of songs have arrived at similar kind of compositional structure, right? Uh, and so if you think about, you know, a lot of bird songs, grab your attention, entertain you, and then leave you with some kind of, of experience at the end. And, you know, just think of the wood thrush in North America. Eole, you know, but we, we, you know. Or the most, one of the most dramatic ones, imagine Japanese warbler, which is like, you know, it goes, and you hear it in all the Kurosawa movies, you know, in the Japanese, the marvelous, uh, marvelous uh, songbird. So they're, it's grabbing your attention, entertaining you, and then leaving you perhaps waiting for more or, 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 or expecting uh, something. And, and um, um, you know, that's a deep complexity to birdsong uh, that shows the real, the whole cognitive complexity and aesthetic complexity of, 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 their, you know, of their lives. And uh, so that's my example of uh, an amazing bird ornament nice. actually distributed across a lot of birds. And Diego, do we have one more audience question? Yeah, yeah, there is one that came by email from Felipe Vargas that is actually right now in an area in, in Colombia where you got uh, Manacus Manacus and Manacus Vitalinus, the golden collar and the white bearded mannequin, you know, hybridizing here in Antioquia. And he was, he was wondering what's the next big challenge on mannequin or Cotinga, you know, unknown behavior. What's, what's the next, you know project that you know an undergrad student can go on and research explore on these neotropical you know mysteries that we still have around what do you think many people would think that explicitly i mean what i'm really trying to inspire in the book is aesthetically motivated research research that takes aesthetic radiation uh and aesthetic evolution seriously right and i think that that's just an overwhelming a large amount of that right uh don't search for the adaptive explanation or, or or you know search for it and, and 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 fail to support it or whatever but but be confident that 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 um that a focus on ornament itself, not the purposes of it, is, is enough for, uh, is, 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 you know, good science, right? So uh, that extends to just, a, a, you know, uh, you know uh, whether it's uh, uh, avian vocal dialects and Ossines that learn their songs or, or to uh, display behavior. And there are plenty of birds that, whose display behaviors uh, are, are, are poorly understood. Uh, so uh, lots and lots of uh, area for, um, you know, aesthetic research to be done in, 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 in birds.